Hi, everyone. It is Kevin Henry. I am the Director of Marketing for Fortune Management, and I am so honored today to be joined by the Director and Founder of Hygiene Mastery, and that's Shannon Richkowski. Hey, Shannon, how are you? I'm great. Thank you, Henry. How are you? I am doing really well. <laughs> Glad we get to hang out a little bit today because there, there's a big question out there for a lot of practices and a lot of our industry, and that's what's going on with hygienists and hiring in the market. And, and I just want to ask you, let's start with the conversation. I'm hearing about so many hygiene shortages around the country. So where have the hygienists gone? <laughs> that is a good question. Uh, and everybody wants to know where they're at because everybody wants to find them right now. And, um, you know, it's kind of, it's, uh, it's one of those things that the storm was already forming prior to 2020. Uh, in 2019, the, um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics actually released a fantastic report that showed us that there was basically about 225,000 positions available for hygienists, but really only about 150,000 actively practicing hygienists. Mm. So, Long before 2020, we were already feeling that pinch and we were already finding that practices needed to get very creative in, in creating workplaces that hygienists wanted to work in. And then 2020 just amplified the entire situation. I, I, my uh, common phrase is it created this perfect storm. Yeah. All these parts and pieces together created a perfect storm that we're all living in right now. And um, we... I am predicting the forecast is going to be about an 18 month window and okay. depending on what practices focus on and what action steps they take, that's going to be dependent on if they're, if they recover on the front end of the storm or if they wait and they're recovering on the back end. So where are we in the storm then? Are we kind of in the middle or are we toward the end? What do you see in that? Yeah, we're, it, it just depends on where, yes, we're in all of those areas, depending <laughs> on the population of hygienists at, at, um, and, and the group of those hygienists. So for example, there's basically about four groups to look at. There is the group of hygienists who are, well, first of all, back up. We need to remember that the career field in hygiene is still about 97% predominantly female. Mm -hmm. So that is something that's playing a factor into this perfect storm. So because it is predominantly female, during 2020, we saw a lot of females that had to exit the career field and in order to be at home because they're mothers and we found that childcare was closed, sitters were limited or not really working in that you know, position. We found that parents or grandparents who were originally uh, playing a, a more of a childcare role were stepping out of that and not able to. And then of course we saw uh, schools all over the country that started doing virtual classrooms. So being a predominantly female career, that group of hygienists exited the career force in order to be back in the household and being with the children. So the good news about that is we're on the back end of that. Schools are opening up. I know here in, uh, in Virginia, our kids were able to get back into the classroom if we, cho if we chose that option about a month ago. So they're gonna finish the year in the classroom. Obviously next fall, we are gonna see a dramatic increase of um, the childcare, the daycare centers are open, sitters are now vaccinated, grandparents are vaccinated and back to helping out. We've got before care, after school care and the schools are, are, are bringing kids back in. And it's all happening right now, but what I'm finding with a lot of the hygienists that I'm talking about that's in that group of people, they're saying, hey, I've already been out of work for a year what's three more months, I'm going to enjoy my summer, I'm going to right. take the summer off, you know, do some of the vacation that maybe we didn't get to do last year and, and just just hunker down for three more months, and then I'll go back in the fall. So for that group, we're on the tail end, but I would say you're not going to see a mass amount of people re entering from that group until um, kids go back in the fall. That's good to know. And yeah, yeah. when they re enter, are they looking for something different out of the practice yes. than they were before they left? Yes. And I'm going to go into about five things that right. every practice needs to think of in order to attract these people that are coming back. The other group of hygienists that's worth thinking about is we had more seasoned hygienists who may have been more on the tail end of their career. Maybe they had three years, five years left that they were thinking, oh, you know, I see a retirement coming, uh, but I'm not quite there yet. 2020 just escalated it. it. It caused everything to move faster. So many of them were fearful. 
uh, they had uncertainty and they just decided, you know what, I'm not, this is too much work. It's too much emotional um, process for me. I'm just going to exit early. Well, here's what's happened in the beginning. That sounded great. And, and that's what we'll do sometimes when we're faced with challenges, we'll just pull away and, and just not face it. But many of them exited early and about a year in their finances are going to start impacting them greatly. Meaning they don't, they may have the money to be sustainable in a retirement, you know, more retirement living, but they're not emotionally or physically ready for that. They still want to travel. They still want a newer car. They may still be doing some remodel work on their homes, or mm -hmm. they may still have, you know, other expenses that they, that they weren't quite prepared to manage on a more retirement or decreased income schedule. So um, you figure we're right about a year into that. And I anticipate about, hey, over the next six months, you're going to see some of these hygienists that exited and they're fantastic clinicians. You know, they're experienced, they have relationships with patients. They're going to get curious and start thinking, huh, what if I picked up a day or two here and there? <laughs> what if I went back and, and maybe worked a little more? I, I kind of yep. had a five-year plan. I jumped the gun a little early. I think I would like to do a few more years in this career field. You're going to see them starting to come back as well. Okay. So it and sounds then, like, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. It sounds like the fall and the winter are going to be very interesting for this profession. Yeah, yeah I do. I, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, existing faces come back into the workforce. And then um, the other thing is we have to remember that we are going to have by this time next year, we will have about three graduating hygiene classes that will, that will be uh, flooding in. So, and they say that about 7,300 students graduate a year. So we've got to get really good about how do we attract our existing hygiene population that exited out either temporarily or what they thought was going to be permanent. And then the new faces in dentistry and what they're going to want when they're coming in as well. So if you're, if we're smart about this, we can be on that front end of the storm versus dealing with it, you know, af with the aftermath. And I know you mentioned five things. I'd love to hear yes, what those are yeah, because I, I, I think every practice could benefit, I'm sure. Yes. And what I'm going to say before I get started on these five is that um, these are not going to be easy. If they were easy, everybody <laughs> would be doing it and nobody would be worrying about this. And because we're not in an ideal situation, I'm going to be really encouraging and stretching everyone to think um, outside the box. And I'm just going to preframe. These are going to be some unideal options okay. because we're not in an ideal situation. So we have to be willing to think a little bit un unideal in a temporary um, manner to help get us through. Well, so like the first thing is any hygienist that you know that has left the industry, whether because they needed to stay home for a period of time or they thought they were ready to transition and exit permanently, I'm going to suggest that all doctors stay in touch with every one of them. You should be texting them at least every couple of weeks. How are you doing? Are you enjoying your retirement? Um, are you finding any downtime? Are you getting bored yet? <laughs> um, any of the mothers that exited, you know, they're carrying a lot of pressure as well because they're thinking, okay, maybe. I've let the practice down because I had to stay home with my kids. You know, they're feeling very torn between being a mom and family provide, you know, family care provider, and then also wanting to be a professional. So mm -hmm. if the docs will reach out to them and say, hey, I know you did what you had to do in the moment. We, you still have a family here. We welcome you back. Um, being that message of encouragement so that it makes them easier to re-enter the workforce. And guess what? When they re-enter, who do you think they're going to go to first? They're going to go to the people who were by their side and supporting them all along. So stay in touch with those hygienists who exited so that you're the face that they come to when they come back in. I like that. Um, and don't be too rigid because a lot of these people who are coming back in, they may not be coming back in with, you were talking about what are they gonna be looking for? Yeah. Um, they may not be looking for that full-time position. They may not be looking for the exact days or hours that they left with. So if I'm a doctor and yeah, I really need five days a week, you know, from eight to five or nine to six or whatever it is, but I've got an existing hygienist who knows our systems, knows our protocols, the patients know them, but really she or he can only offer me Tuesdays and Thursdays, in this storm, 
you accept the Tuesdays and Thursdays because getting those Tuesdays and Thursdays is better than getting nothing or waiting another nine months before you even have an applicant. And sure. I've got offices that have waited months and months and months to even get applicants. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow. Um, the second uh, strategy that I would recommend is uh, enhancing your recruiting efforts. <laughs> in the past, um, we've been in dentistry, we've been able to get away with putting a post out there, pretty generic post. We're looking for a hygienist these days a week, apply. <laughs> and I'm kind of being a little um, funny about that. Obviously people do a better job than that, but now we can't just do a good job. When it comes to recruiting, we must do an extraordinary job. So that means um, one, looking at your ad. We used to place an ad based on what we were looking for in the office, right? Through our filter. We're looking for an out, you know, friendly, positive hygienist that believes in great patient care. We labeled everything we want. Okay. In the ads today, you want to label everything they want. Got it. Are you looking to join a practice that focuses on safety? Safety is a big thing right now, right? A practice that, that stays abreast in PPE, um, a practice that has gone above and beyond in, in creating safety in the office, a uh, practice that stands for fun, family environment. Communicate who you are um, and, and you're going to attract the people who want that you know, versus a generic ad. Of course, you're looking for a hygienist that can do a great job cleaning teeth. Everybody's looking for that. <laughs> um, so your, your recruiting efforts are gonna be huge. Um, also, you've gotta to respond to those applicants immediately because by the time you respond, a half a dozen office, other offices are, have also already responded. So we can't wait three days to say, hey, we'd like to interview you. It's they responded and you are immediately in contact with them. You can't wait a week and a half to get them in for an interview. A week and a half from now, they will have already had five other offers. Makes sense. So respond quickly in Makes your recruiting sense. efforts. Um, and then the other thing that people are, are, are under look or not um, putting as much focus on in the recruiting side is it's not just posting that creates the recruiting. It's um, your, your current temper, the, the current temps that may be coming in. So many of our offices, because we don't have a permanent hygienist, they've hired a temp. The temp network is very close knit, meaning you got to take care of your temps so that your temps will brag and rave about your practice because the temps are directing applicants on where they should or should not consider working. Um, and also some of these temps, they're only temping because they're getting a feel of where they might want to actually call home one day. Great point. So we've got to take care of our temps and make sure that we are uh, creating a, a good experience for them because they are going to... Um, either be our rating fan or not. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense for sure. Yeah. And then um, the next one is going to challenge a few people on, on the, uh, that's listening. And that is <laughs> to like pre-frame it. It's going to challenge you. We are in an unrealistic times. <laughs> um, don't overlook the value of how a doctor associate can support you. Mm. Um, now, this is going to be a fit in some areas of the country and not in others. It's going to be a fit in some practices versus others. But I will tell you, I am seeing more and more of my doctors, especially in the bigger cities, they are, um, they're finding new, they're finding new grads from dental school who are applying, who are hungry. They want to get in a practice. They want to be with patients. They want to get their foot in the door. And even if you're not ready for an associate with a full restorative schedule, they can do a great job stepping in and fulfilling the need from the hygiene department. And now some of you may be thinking, oh, but why, you know, what's the return on investment on that? And so let's talk about those numbers for a minute. Right. If a, if a, a new grad or um, an associate doctor can make around, you know, a base pay, it can typically be around 500 a day. In some of these larger cities, we are finding hygienists and temp services asking for $50 a day. So do the math on that. If you could get a, a newer grad that's hungry and eager, has a great attitude, wants to be there, and is um, willing to see patients at around $62, you may be paying more per hour. However, remember your associate doctor can oftentimes have two rooms. With an assistant, they can run a very elegantly booked, easily um, accessible to hygiene column um, uh, schedule. And they're going to be able to work in same day dentistry. So in my offices that are currently 
maybe using an unideal situation to, to, to help solve an unideal situation, they're actually finding that at the end of the day, those two columns are more profitable and more productive from bottom line profits than some of these single book tidying schedules. That's fascinating. And I'm sure, as you said, it took a little bit of a change in the mindset uh, of the dentist of the practice to say, here's what we could do with our hygiene department, but obviously it's paying off. Oh, absolutely. I haven't had a single doc that I actually had a couple of docs to me come and approach. It wasn't necessarily my idea. They came to me and said, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. I, I, I mean, I have months and months of patients on past due list. I can't, we can't get anybody in. I've got empty operatories because they don't have hygienists in them, but I've got a new grad that wants in. I'm not ready for the new grad. I'm not ready for a restorative hygiene schedule, but they're willing to see the patient. We worked out the numbers. I said, okay, well, let's try it. And, and the ones that have done it, none of them have come back to me and said that was a mistake. That's fascinating. And they're molding at this point, they're also using it as an opportunity to mold that associate into uh, a more valuable associate in the future. Um, and the ones that they know that, hey, we want to grow with this associate, it's giving them a quicker insert into the practice. The associates are meeting the patients, they're getting to know the patients, um, and they're already starting to build. Some of them are already starting to get to the point where they have less hygiene in their schedule for the pure fact that they're starting to build a restorative schedule now. So that's great. It's, it's an outside the box thought process, but we're in, you know, that's what it's going to require right now. And, and I have to admit, I like that there's an assistant in there as well. Uh, you yes. know, that obviously that can really ramp things up in a lot of states. So that's fantastic. Yes. And this assistant doesn't have to be um, a, a peak performing assistant in the matter that they're super experienced. You could take an entry level assistant. Maybe the only, the big thing they would need, depending on the state, each state's governing um, board is x-ray license. They need to have that x-ray license, but they're seating the patient, they're prepping the patient, the doctor's doing the exam and the cleaning, they are um, doing the x-rays, they're dismissing the patient, pre-appointing the patient, turning the room over. So if you've got two rooms going, you could very easily still have a doctor do a, a filling in one room and the assistant is getting the other room ready for the hygiene patient. I like that. Great yeah. thought. Absolutely. Um, and then the second one is very, it runs parallel with what I just explained, except for it's done with a hygienist, assisted hygiene schedule. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm gonna, I'm very clear. I recognize that there are some hygienists out there cringing and maybe even some doctors that have tried it. Assisted hygiene can get a very bad reputation. I get that. When it's not set up correctly, it is disastrous. It's not a fit for every practice. It, you know, you hear of hygienists talking about it, there was burnout, their hands hurt, their body hurt. The schedule was crazy. Uh, there was a perception that patients were rushed in and rushed out. We all have heard those horror stories. What I'm going to challenge you with is that um, that does not have to equal this. <laughs> Assisted hygiene schedules can be set up elegantly and set up in a way that we actually hi have hygienists rave. They're raving fans of it. They say they never want to go back to single book. It's just, it needs to be set up correctly and the, re the, the human resources need to be available to make sure that, that your hygienist isn't trying to see two patients at once. And there are definitely ways to do this. And um, certainly, I mean, we, we support doctors all over the country on, on building those sorts of programs. And, and maybe in the future, that still isn't the model you want. But in the, in the moment, one thing I'll challenge people to think about here is it still could be better than having patients sitting on a past due list while their gum disease advances, yeah. while necessary restorative work goes unnoticed, or this gets real serious. We're talking about the difference of whether or not a patient gets in that year and gets their, their yearly life-saving oral cancer screening. And so if, you know, if somebody's on a past due list and the early, early detection of oral cancer goes unnoticed, isn't that much worse than the fact that maybe we had to create a couple of days of assisted hygiene to push through this, this weird storm that we're in, but we're able to catch oral cancer early and save somebody's life. So Absolutely. it's just how you look at it and, and what are we willing to do to, um, to approach the opportunities that are right in front of us. And, and, and I'm assuming a lot of that is trying to make that dance happen between the front and the back whenever it comes to the scheduling and making sure that everybody understands if a change is coming, here's why it's important. And that oral cancer you just mentioned is so important, obviously. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're talking about a very 
very simple life-saving screening that most patients don't even realize they're getting, which that's a whole nother <laughs> the hygiene business yep. side of, of our coaching. But um, yeah, it's just, uh, we, are, we are capable of getting through this. And, and the options are limitless. It's just, you know, we can either sit around and continue to complain that there's not enough hygienists. And guess what? There's not enough hygienists. So what are we going to do next? <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know, maybe modifying some things that didn't work in the past. I'm not saying that all assisted hygiene programs are perfect, but they can be set up in a way that they do bring um, more success than fault. It's just knowing how to do that. And, um, and then our final, um, my final message to the industry is um, be the message to the dental hygiene schools that we need to increase our acceptance on students. Mm. Um, we, we were already for a decade not uh, growing our um, graduate pool at the level that, that we needed based on the amount of patients that need care and, the, and hygienists that are exiting from the energy industry. So if you, are, if you have a voice in your state, um, we've got to get more messengers out there that's encouraging um, and, and, coming, and coming from a place of abundance. There's, you know, we want to be real careful that as a hygiene group, that we're looking at abundance as well. You know, sometimes we'll get caught up in, oh, if there's too many hygienists, I won't have a job. Or if there's yeah. too many hygienists, I won't make enough money. The, if you look at the gap right now, it, we're not gonna fill that. We're, we're, not, we're not gonna reach that point anyway. And the only, thinking from scarcity, the only people that are getting hurt are the patients in the long run because we're not creating access to care that's needed. I love that you're talking about an abundance mentality as well as, you know, forgive the, the cliche, but the outside the box thinking as well, uh, that it's really going to take some changes in mindset to get out of this storm and start back to where we want to see the dental hygiene profession be, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's very cool. And, and Shannon, uh, you know, I know that there's going to be a lot of folks who are going to say, okay, I want to ask you about this. I want to find out more about this. What's the best way for them to do that? Because because you've given people a lot to think about in this segment. Yeah, sure. Um, well, the, the easiest way is go to hygienemastery.com. Um, all of our contact information is on there. You can reach me personally. My personal contact information is on there. And as well as my amazing team of coaches throughout the country. Uh, they all have their direct information. So you can reach us through the phone line, through our email. Um, you can send a message through the website. We make it very easy for you to contact us, which you should be doing for your patients as well. <laughs> and um, one of us would, will, will immediately reach out to you. You know, the very first point you made was about staying in communication. And I think it's so important that we're reaching out and saying, I need some help. I need some ideas. I want to make sure that I'm staying on top of things. And I know that's what you and your team do so well at Hygiene Mastery. So thanks for taking a few minutes today. I really do appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure. And um, I just stick with it, guys. We are, we are all in this storm together and we will get through it together and we will come out shining. I know we will. I believe in this game of dentistry. I believe that what we do is important work. I believe that our patients need us and they need us to come up with solutions, solutions to make sure that they get the care that they deserve. And we appreciate you and the Hygiene Mastery team offering those solutions as well. So make sure that you reach out to Shannon. Uh, we will have the contact information right after this video to make sure that you know how to do that. And until next time, thanks for watching.